so hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel as you can see we have uh, international visitors <laughs> and we're going to have awesome um, discussions her name is grace and um, but i'll let her introduce her, herself more just a brief introduction of who you are and mm -hmm. why you are international <laughs> my name is grace but i prefer wanda so wanda nyaga i i am a nutritionist i do have a keen interest on let's say behavior behavior science yeah so thank you for agreeing to come let's do this talk about the topic that's listed as the title of this video purity culture right what it is uh, even for me that i admit it's something that i created interesting just recently mm -hmm. from your post again okay. i didn't know but it's those things you see you're like huh this is actually real. This is actually happening, and it yeah. needs to be talked about. So, welcome, and let's just dive into it. Like, what is what is what is this purity culture? Okay, so thanks. Um, what is purity culture? I I think, or rather, in in few words, purity culture is like the practice of making sure especially women um ab abstain from sex and most mostly preserve their virginity up until marriage mm -hmm. and it is something like just a backstory it's something that came up in the evangelical christian world that was as a result of um, rejecting the free love movement i think it was in the u.s that was in the 1990s and it was also meant to be like a measure of curbing HIV and AIDS and teenage pregnancies. So it started as something, I think, just like everything else, it started as something that was meant to bring a solution to reducing the number of HIV and AIDS cases and also reduce teenage pregnancies. But then over time, it has mm. evolved into something, something that else. is yeah, totally yeah. different. But I think something that we see today that was practiced back then is how girls, um, especially young girls, had to make a pledge to keep themselves up until they they were married, and that included either signing of uh, what do you call them, like purity, purity exactly purity agreements or wearing purity rings purity oh, bracelets yeah, that's where it came from yes purity bracelets so when you keep just to be clear when you when you say keep themselves is avoid sex avoid sex not just sex but avoid sex avoid um any physical most well the way i've seen it mostly physical contact so for example people used to make fun of how um christian boys and girls don't hug or they don't hold hands ah. because you're keeping pure until you walk down the aisle which i know well depending well it's it's a huge it's a whole other you know, conversation <laughs> but yeah it's mostly purity culture mostly emphasizes on like physical uh, like abstaining from all physical contact with the opposite gender wow. until you're married what Yes, that's why they keep on saying keep a Bible distance. Yeah, space makes space for Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's the whole thing about uh -huh. purity culture movement. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and I personally I didn't know it was like like looking back, I participated probably or it's things I had, but I never knew it, there's a term for it, purity culture. And, and actually, like it had a, an origin. And it had an origin. So you mentioned 1990s. Is it does it mean that it wasn't happening before? Um, so it could be I could have read research that is recent, okay. but I think it's because it was as a result of trying to reduce the HIV cases, then it's probably something that became more mainstream in the nineties yes. than it was. I'm I'm assuming and also basing on the Bible sorry, and also basing on the Bible, um they used to do the whole betrothing and you had to be so probably it's something that started way back, but then the wave, like, you know how something becomes like mm. a culture and it's rubber stamped and mm. it's being practiced in churches. So it became a almost thing. Almost a law. Yeah, almost a law. It became a thing in, in the 90s, okay. the early 90s. Yeah. 
so for someone who like me who hasn't had about it before mm-hmm. well i have but not interacted with the term uh to a point of saying i understand yeah like what does that look like especially in kenya and mm-hmm. in, in our what 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 does it look like in the context we are in i think the context is because it's something that i would say is imported from like the american context but the way it's practiced is very very similar because we have churches in kenya um having like the whole um you know talks to teenagers but then there are talks about you know don't go around hugging boys don't go around doing this don't oh, boys won't you make you pregnant and you know there's this small like fear instilling fear mm-hmm. when it comes to like sexuality and then telling them sex is only for marriage and never telling them what sex really is yes so and i this is how i feel like from when you're a teenager like your body is almost stand against you even before you know what it does yes it's like you you told okay sex is a sin and sex before marriage is a sin okay but what is sex like why is it a sin and how does it happen like, you just, yeah you're not even you don't, you don't even know, know what but it then is. you know it's a sin and then you develop this fear and this shame around sin, around, around sex. sex yes um this guilt as well so it's it's something I feel like it's a fear tactic yeah. that works perfectly well until it doesn't work until it doesn't work in yeah. How does it not work? How does it not work? I think when you there's a thing of when you tell someone not to do something yeah that's when they actually really charged to do it yeah and especially if you don't explicitly explicitly tell them okay this is why this should not be done they'll want to find out for themselves mm. so i think most so it works is then again is the whole reason why you actually tell them to keep it yeah. because and they'll then explain to them mm-hmm. and then i feel like teenagers just because they're in like a very explore yeah. explorative stage of life yeah. Yeah. they will want to explore they're curious and if as a parent you never had like an open conversation about it which most of the time homes don't help you don't you don't even talk about no, it no one ever talk to me if you're being honest no one ever talk to me about sex and actually as we were saying that uh, this i mean there are people who might actually be offended that use this word sex a lot they like it's a taboo why they like, say it out loud keep on saying exactly sex. And, and old people like well like consider myself old like yeah, old, old people like us you will still be hesitant and yeah. I, i know this is something you're going to talk about in this conversation but yeah. just to take you back there's something you have talked even before we go how we go on how now this purity culture works in against the whole even the intention of the yeah. of the, the whole culture in itself yeah. you said something like even before you know how your body is your you put your hand again like it's it turned against you. against you yeah yeah so maybe you can like expand on that so i think like for example when let's say from age 10 maybe or well let's say 12 mm-hmm. cuz that's when like um students start learning about um hormonal no hormonal biology and like the male biology female biology and so you have this idea of oh so this is what it looks like then so i think from that stage every parent is soaking on oh so now that you're a grown girl or you're a grown boy the things i think you should know and the thing is like don't have sex and then the child is like hey, they don't because they don't, don't they don't, you're not even don't don't have sex. you're just sex is bad sex is bad it's wrong it's wrong it's wrong it is very wrong sex is say. wrong <laughs> yeah so you told sex is wrong and at that point the only thing you've learned is the female parts and you the male parts and you're like okay so how does sex happen and what and is then, sex and then why is no one tells you exactly suddenly wrong so all of a sudden it's like sex is wrong and i think for 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 a 12 year old they probably haven't grasped the intensity of the word sex in itself yet they don't understand what it means but you've already told them sex is wrong so 
and then because they've learned this is what I have as a boy, this is what I have like yeah, this is my body part and a girl this is what I have as my body part and then no because they're told sex is wrong they start looking at them, themselves like okay like I don't understand then, my body fully but I'm already being told my body can actually do something wrong with someone else's body so it's just like yes and you know these conversations never like there's never a conversation after sex is wrong no one changes it back so when is right exactly also we don't know at what point does it does it become right? right exactly and people carry it um even in marriage thank you yeah and uh, and not to go to how uh it becomes retrospective and how it works i mean being pure and everything i mean that's another conversation that yeah. i don't want to get to because I can just we'll lose the whole day. Yes, and I can just say loosely like that. And I know I know I'll be victimized by this, but it's my strong belief that. I'm, do I need to say it or not? <laughs> like virginity does not serve. Like there is no correlation between virginity and successful marriage. Thank you. <laughs> there it's isn't true. because yeah. virginity is just. I mean. <laughs> Breaking up the hymen and the man having relations with a man uh, with a, a woman does not make or break a marriage. Mm-hmm. And even just to go back into that, like at no point are we told, okay, now sex is good. Yeah. And admittedly, because I have people around me who are recently married, and of course at, at that age, mm-hmm. people still fear talking about sex, even with their partner. Even with your partner, like you're doing, but you never talk about it. Yeah, and 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 these are conversations that even as we are having them, they are not had in church. Yeah. Which I feel like that's if you're teaching about marriage and how it's a God's institution, teach us everything. Teach sex. Teach. Yes. Yes. Please uh, negate uh, or rather negate the fact or tell us now uh, since you told us between uh, when we are young, twelve to eighteen, twelve minutes sex yeah. is wrong. Tell us at what point sex is right, right and yeah. actually what it is because you never actually told that was sex. Yeah. Yeah, I think you know. yeah, those are very very important points, and I also think it's um, someone was I think I read a quote somewhere. It's probably on my when I was deep into researching about purity culture. I think I read something about uh, that mentioned that purity culture is the prosperity gospel of sexuality or rather marriage oriented or rather male female relationships so the way people make you feel like if you actually wait you'll get no, an you amazing have husband. a husband no you, you won't get an amazing wife no you, you have won't. a perfect sex life no you and won't you get there and it's like first of all you don't even know what sex is so if you wait and and people make it a taboo like for instance if you found me reading a boss it's like girl exactly you, why you yeah it becomes what, a, what are you looking for it's exactly. still a taboo so you you're not even given a chance to learn about it or even like educate yourself about it or even have discussions exactly i and feel like sex should be like even a discussion in bible study groups it should because we have this is my opinion we have this book of songs of solomon of course we don't and that book is very rich it's erotic it's actually very, it's erotic <laughs> it's yes. an erotic book yeah. and if you read it in the eyes of like you know relationships between like a man and a woman i feel like that's where probably the church should get its message about like like sex education messages from if they're so scared of like following what uh, it's the being world, world exactly the world because the what the world does their own kind of sex education so if the church is really keen on oh we're not following this then they should have something derived from some the bible someone. because we do have that covered in the bible so let's not bury our heads in the sand and be like oh that is wrong what is going on in the world in the world but then we don't want to actually take what is in the bible it's there it's there so how many times have you ever had uh, we are doing uh, what's the exposition of the book of i wish I, and if anyone ever goes to a church where they're doing an exposition Please, on the book of songs <laughs> of solomon <laughs> tafadali for me <laughs> or show the video because will, yeah yes. please please because I feel like we I have, wish they did it as much as they do the book of Corinthians. You know, word by word. Yeah. Love is patient. Okay. Yeah, they should read that. They should do the one for... I can't remember what, but your lips and something, something. But they should just... 
Like make sure we I wish, I wish we, yeah? we have the Bible. We can, we can. Yeah, you should. And I feel as much as we might say it in a light way, yeah. it's very pertinent. It is. It is. They will tell you. You know, people say loosely things like loosely things like, "Oh, um, to have a great marriage, you have to have great sex." But what up until that? when you got married, no one talks to you about sex, yeah. especially if you're in church. Come on, you're not out out if you if you don't research outside the bible mm. you will um, outside the church you will never interact with this conversation you will never yeah. interact with the fact that that you even never even know what sex is yeah. you will always keep it as a taboo you yeah. will never be have open like people still have reservations and if you bring it up you're likely to be rebuked for bringing you know the devil is using you why are you profanity in exactly the, that is the <laughs> holy discussions but yeah. How is it profanity? But it's the whole center of actually having like a a stable marriage, as they would say. Yeah. And admittedly, I'm t- like I have in our uh, premarital counseling, mm-hmm. we talked about so many things. Like they really exposed about financial, mm-hmm. how you handle finances with your spouse, how you handle conflict with your. But when it came to the topic of sex, it's like we were just left to discuss. Like find it out. <laughs> like they, they weren't at the, and I feel like it needs to be to be to be broken down into those simplicity. Like yeah, I actually had there's a this Christian couple that got married, mm. so they went so they had kept themselves. Mm. So the girl literally didn't know what sex was. She didn't know the fact that she was getting married. She was actually now going to have sex, but the guy knew. Also, how are you? Also, again, getting married, you have not had this discussion. Mm-hmm. But anyway, they went for honeymoon. Mm-hmm. She was so mad at the guy. What is he doing in my space? Like wow. the girl, guy, and it's so sorry. The guy tried touching her. She's like, why, why are you touching Dugu. me? Dugu. Why are you? Dugu. <laughs> okay, I've seen Dugu. Like, <laughs> they were like, what is it? She didn't know what the guy was doing. Like, what do you want to do? Yeah. In society, we haven't brought ourselves into a situation of being open about it yeah. and actually explicitly talking about it yeah. and not just telling people sex is bad yeah. sex is wrong mm. sex is a sin mm. tell us what is sex yeah why is it a sin yeah when does it become right when does it stop being a sin and when does it stop becoming a sin yeah. because the people and then you carry it in your mind. marriage exactly and then even how you do it it's meant to be enjoyed it's meant to recreate yeah. but mostly for enjoyment especially yeah. in marriage and you should have it in uh, in fullness yeah. not having reservations. reservations yeah but even in marriage it's like ah, 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 like you still feel like it's wrong in your yeah. mind yeah i feel like that is it there's no people have sex when lights up thank you <laughs> it's actually very I think probably because of um, so I'm currently reading a book called um, The Great Sex Rescue, and it's by Sheila. I don't know what is about. <laughs> Let's it by rescue, please. Yeah. Her name is Sheila. Can't pronounce her second name properly, so let me not even attempt. But she used to be a um, purity culture author. Like she used to author books on purity culture. Mm. But when she realized how much damage it does, especially to women, she had to turn around and actually started talking about the harmful side of purity culture. And she was saying like one of the things about purity culture, because we've been taught that sex is strong. Mm -hmm. So even for people who get married, because no one told you at what point it It became wrong. Yeah. So you still have, you think that, oh yeah, I'm married, but then your brain your body might have moved, but then your brain is still at it's, it's stuck at where you were told sex is wrong. Yeah. That's why most people sometimes, even married couples, they've been together for like, I don't know, 10 or whatever years, but they will never be comfortable with having it, having sex in daylight or even with lights on. It will be like lights off. And it's just something about your mind struggling to, it's, I think they call it, um, um, I forget the name, but then it's where you like what you're practicing and what your mind thinks about it. They're two different things, mm. so they're conflicting. They're very conflicting. So you may not even enjoy the exactly. moment. You're not there. Yeah, and then um, 
So that is one of the, I would say, the negative effects of purity culture. The fact that you actually, you there's a high possibility you will be haunted by like the memories of what sex was presented to you the very first time and it might stay with you for so long and until you decide to like do the work and i think something else is um so purity culture because it really really emphasizes on women's virginity then it goes to burden women let's talk about that yeah. yeah it goes to burden women with the um the whole the aspects of yeah. exactly aspects and responsibility of like morals and purity you have to present yourself yeah and it also makes it makes it look like men are not in the men not are, involved exactly and men like so how it it's presented is that as a woman i should dress in a way that will not tempt my brother <laughs> in christ I'm triggered. I should I should walk in a way that doesn't trigger any man in church. I should speak in a way that doesn't And even it happens now, Siangushe brother. Yeah, yeah. And people say it's so innocently, but they never really consider what that what means. that does to yeah. a woman, yeah. what does that means to women. And it also makes it look like men have absolutely no control over their sexual urges or over their lustful thoughts because they're like oh men this is the nature of men men are wired to want sex women are wired to, to want, want sex. sex but i mean let me let's <laughs> talk about it because people me i i mean i see a guy i'm like oh okay like i could do things with you but, but, but you it, don't voice it you Why? don't voice it and people don't expect it and actually if i say that even you who is watching now be like chick you are you, you, broken yeah you but why is it and and i feel like it it stems from that really bombarding the woman to just be in a way as yeah. if we, package yourself yeah as if yeah. we we do not have sexual desires as if we you can't see a guy and what i mean you can see a guy and want sex with them and even like probably like how they look and probably when yes last that no it's not probably you can actually last it's not only men who yeah. last uh, on women but then pretty culture makes it look like last is last and sexual desire is something that is um a man thing and a man thing but it's also like embodied in us it's us who yeah. causes it and it's us who causes it and it's us who are responsible for that not to happen so, in men so now it becomes very strange or rather very difficult for example in you actually notice this when i think it's last year or some years back when again in the US they had couple of like pastors in church being accused of um sexual assault or stuff like that assault. and what yeah mm-hmm. assault and what happened in, what happens in most cases is everyone is like oh but this is a man of god and you know that men are tempted by this and blah 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 and it it becomes a thing of did you wear in a what is, what's the word um you what know you're wearing no i'm i'm looking for the i know there's a Verse in the Bible that says we should dress in a modest way. Mm-hmm. So that I feel that scripture is written in scripture like that about modest. modest. Yeah, about there modest. Is stressing. There's something about. I think it's Titus, and mm-hmm. Titus is telling the older women mm-hmm. to teach the younger women to be modest in the. Mm-hmm. It's something about let them not use uh, extravagance. I don't mm. know hair, mm. earrings, and stuff. But let them oh, be yeah. modest in their oh, character. Yeah. But then people took it so much out of context, such that modesty, actually, when purity culture started, modesty included women wearing long skirts, full necks, so that it's like or oh, whatever polo necks or whatever, like up to your neck, so that and your arms are covered, but you have no part of your skin that to showing. protect the men. To prevent the men from lusting after you or sexually harassing you or raping you, and I feel like tell the men that okay, you you're lusting after so and so, but wrong. that's wrong. No one says that, and so, and even now in church, yeah. now in twenty in 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 March twenty twenty two, yeah, it's still it's a still a conversation whereby it's it's the woman. So if 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 something happens, but. They, they always want to know with which woman did they are uh, we all you, that one yeah that's like this exactly that one is like this no one ever talks about at 
no one tells the man is wrong no one yeah. says that class who whatever is wrong yeah. so so that we have allowed yeah. men to go on to do this to just be expressive in yeah. their in their in their, in their sexual desires whether in the context of marriage or, or not, not. Yeah. and no one points out that that's actually wrong and you have a responsibility mm-hmm. as a man or yeah. even as a human being yeah to i mean you cannot for instance say you did this just because this person was stressed like this yeah true you also have like you need to have your own consciousness also. yeah and i feel like it's the culture has not given it's it's they don't talk about it like don't. there's no culture that says that men men are it's it's not wrong for them to to yeah. look and to yeah. want and yeah. it's it's like giving permission that can look want and take yeah true true so it's more like it gives them the permission to like act on it and no like consequences and that's why in a way right now purity culture is being considered as one of the main attributes of rape culture because Let's if you ex- yes because if you expect women to dress a certain way so that they will never get sexually harassed Then when a man sexually harassed a woman who's half dressed you'd be like oh but you are wanting it because you are half dressed. Yeah. So in as and, and it's really sad how I I feel sad that I don't know how long it will take but it's taking super long for the church to realize that the thing that we really love and we are pushing forward is actually causing so much harm than benefit retrospect. Yes. Yeah. Than benefit. So the first thing is the shame, the shame you feel from the purity culture. The second thing is Purity culture does fuel rape culture by placing the burden of morality on, on women. One gender. Yes. And the third so that thing, the other us don't have a, the men don't have a responsibility yes. to they always have a scapegoat which is or oh, she was dressed this way she was and walking alone at sure? night. Exactly. She was walking alone at night. She was in you know, it she came to my house or I mean different stuff. She didn't say no. She didn't say no. Which leads me to the third thing. Purity culture never advocates or even teaches consent. Mm-hmm. Women are taught to be reciprocative of sexual advances and not and not pushing them away. And especially for those who are in like because then purity culture says okay you're married you, you you're not doing this until you're married. So once you're married it's like no it's like a sex license for any time your husband wants it he really doesn't have to ask for it yeah because you're the wife you should whether you're mad whether you're tired whether you I don't know but you should always be ready to give it to him when, when he, he wants, wants it. it and where he wants it because and how he wants it and how he wants it so there's no aspect of consent of learning that we are engaging in sex we because are we both want it. it and you are core partners and <sighs> Tonight becomes a thing of it's duty sex. I'm a wife. So I'm always going to do this. Maxi doesn't like, matter how I feel about it, but because I got the title and because that's what I signed up for, then it's expected of you. And it said that on one of the chapters, I think it's chapter 2 or 3 of Sheila's book, she talks about how very many and I I think I'll task the viewers to if especially for those who are from a christian background and especially evangelical background just go do a search of most of the marriage books that have been um authored most of them insist on wives to always give in to their husbands um advances yes and there's one specific book i can't remember the title but it's quite common i think it's his and hers or i want to say it. his needs her needs he, yeah his needs her needs and i think it's one of the guys who was interviewed and he was saying how he feels like he raped his wife because sometimes the wife doesn't want to have sex but he wants it and so i'm like why does it feel like there is rape in marriage and exactly. that's actually rape and people another, don't another conversation exactly but purity culture says this like it just rules out the woman and it's rules yeah it's rules out concept so for purity culture there's nothing like your husband raped you like no you you're married should be doing it and i know no one have said it i know i know there are people who will be like exactly what you've said i mean when you're married you have no chance of 
not wanting sex, yeah. you have no chance of. Because cause, cause I feel like sex is a. It's an exchange. It's a, it's yeah. a, it's a, it's a, it's a given. Uh, it's a given unless, of course, it's rape and it's yeah. not consensual. Yeah. So when you talk about consent, it's not like we are like no, we are, we are like you're denying your husband yeah. uh, sex, but it's 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 the issue of of whereby you have to be in that space. Yeah. 